in the last video, we were covering some of the original basics for RP1404, and we were talking about how we were going back and forth between this daily time scale with monthly data and moving to the sub-daily scale, for instance, hourly. And something I'd like to point out here is that if we had all this hourly data, this and say this is 8,760, that you really don't need this method. Really, the idea is to say, okay, we're trying to get something that predicts this all of this data, but let's just say you only took a snapshot in the springtime and you only got this chunk. You came in for two weeks, right? And the temperature in that short period of time only ranged plus or minus 10 degrees F, in which you didn't get this whole range of temperature. You didn't see how your building operated under these different conditions. What you did get, though, is this spread. You got information related to the diurnal cycle of that building. So if this was 10 days and we plot this out, we plot this energy versus time for those days, you might see something that looks like this. Maybe it's very sinusoidal with respect to the hour of the day. This, this is time and this is energy. Where now you can get this height information from a short period. Because we're making an, an assumption that hopefully if this building operates similarly throughout the year, that once we have this up and down, we can use utility bills for the past year, which does cover the temperature, and then we can get this base shape, and we're basically just applying this height across that shape throughout the whole year. So this method always will start looking at monthly utility bills, and they're day normalized. So again, this, this is an average energy use per day for a given month. And if you fit one of these linear change point models, you'll get something like this. And this is just one example. Okay, there's different model shapes, but this is one. And you're hoping that this has a pretty good fit in this method. Okay. The next part is to actually go ahead and collect this hourly information. So I'm going to clean this plot up. So let's come down here. And for instance, let's say we came in for two weeks. And now you got something like this. Okay. Essentially taking a, you're taking a small snapshot here. You're not getting all of the hour daily data for a year. You're getting some portion of it. So if we went ahead and we took that original model coming from the average daily monthly, we divided by 24 to get to the hourly scale, we might have a model that looks something that a different color that looks like this. And again, we're trying to fill out this up and down part. So if we take this model and instead of having this constant here, let's replace it with some added information. So let's solve for what that, that value was. If you sub subtract this term from both sides, you'll get E divided by 24 minus B divided by 24. B minus change point, only one positive. That is equal to some constant term. And if we if we were to take this here and we plotted it here, you're essentially subtracting out this constant. And so our new line would look something would be on ooh, ooh, can't draw straight. And we would look like this. Now we want to predict the leftover portion. 
So if we go ahead and say now, let's subtract out this model portion from the data. Oh, excuse me. This here line is if you just have this term. And if we want the distance from a data point, say from this data point to this, this error here, that would be your hourly energy minus T divided by 24 T minus T CP plus. That's this error. And if we would go ahead and we would plot that error, or what was in the report called the hourly residuals, because it's what's left over for taking out this temperature dependent portion, you would get something that looks like this. You've basically now flattened this out with regards to temperature. This is E hourly minus E divided by 24 T minus T. And now we can go ahead and we can say, okay, now let's take this data set and let's use other predictors that we know can maybe help us out. So if we took this variable and instead of plotting against T, we plotted it against, let's say, some measure of occupancy. So when occupants are there, you might end up getting something. This would be obviously a very, very ideal case, but something very linear with regards to occupancy, where when this residual is high, so this energy use versus this, this model is high, that means perhaps there's a lot of internal load at that moment, at that hour. If it's very low, that could be nighttime. And so here, we, when we have low occupancy, we might have a lower residual because we're lower in the energy and higher in occupancy. And if this is linear related, now we can go ahead and this still is that hour, this hourly residual. We can go ahead and, re and regress this. Where now this is your y and this is your x. So if we do a straight line. For instance, if we you know, y equals mx plus b, we'll call, we're going to give these new names. y is going to be this. Uh, we're going to give a slope of, we'll call it d. We'll call this slope d. This x will be some internal load variable, and we'll call this E. So let's write this out. This would look like the hourly minus D24 is equal to plus some other constant, some new constant that basically fills out what you need to be. And so this is a known. You figure this, this out, you have an array of values. You had, if you were taking two weeks, you'd have 336 energy values, and you'd have these also at the hourly. So there's 336 items in our vectors. We have this measured as well, and now we can go ahead and we can regress for these coefficients. And now, once we have this, if we want to predict this hourly energy use, you can go ahead and just rewrite this whole equation by moving this over to the other side. So our final hourly equation is equal to a temperature-dependent portion plus some coefficient d times some other variable plus a constant. And this final equation will now help you if you would predict throughout the whole year, we scroll back up, this can help predict all these points throughout the whole year and do it fairly accurately. 
even though you only had maybe a small chunk of it. And so this is how you could extrapolate throughout the whole year. Now the next part, in the next video, we're going to discuss, does it make a difference whether this was taken here, or up here, or down here? Does it matter if you came in the winter, the summer, swing season, on the prediction level?